Hello there, and welcome to the course on Designing and Versioning HTTP and REST APIs. I'm Jeffrey Richter. I'm a Microsoft Azure software architect, the author of several programming books, and a co-founder of a company called Wintelect, which specializes in consulting and training services for software developers. On this slide, I put three of my more recent books, Windows Runtime via C Sharp, CLR via C Sharp, and Windows via C, C++. I also created a six and a half hour course on architecting distributed cloud applications that's available for free on YouTube. This course is technology agnostic. That is, it's not specific to Amazon or Azure or any other cloud service provider. It introduces just a lot of cloud patterns and terminology that cloud software developers need to know. At the bottom of the slide, I also put some contact information for me if you'd like to reach me by way of email or befriend me on LinkedIn, and also my Twitter handle is here too. The purpose of this course is to explain to you how to design a services HTTP API in a way that achieves the following goals. We want your API to be developer friendly and we'll do that by using consistent patterns and industry web standards like HTTP, REST, and JSON. We also want the API to be efficient and cost effective for you, the service implementer, but also for your customers, the clients who are calling into your service. Frequently, we will wrap the APIs with client libraries or SDKs that are written in a variety of programming languages. And this also simplifies the experience for your customers who are calling your API. I'll talk more about client libraries much later in the course. We also want the API designed in such a way, and the service too, so the customers can create fault-tolerant apps. And we do that by having the clients make multiple retry requests against your service and by implementing your service operations idempotently. I have a whole section on this topic a little bit later on in the course too. It's a very important topic. We also want to design the API and the service to be sustainable and versionable for you, the service implementer, so you can add features over time in a robust way, but also for clients so that they can easily adopt the new features that you are introducing into the service. We're going to accomplish this by defining clear API contracts for your service. And those API contracts have two main requirements. The first requirement is that as you are updating your service, the customer workloads that are currently dependent upon your service, those customer workloads can never break due to a change in the service. We typically accomplish this by having the clients call into a particular API version of the service. That way you can iterate in a different API version for your service. But we have another requirement too. And that requirement is that we want customers to be able to adopt a new version of your service and also a new version of any SDKs or client libraries that wrap your service without requiring or forcing the customers to make any code changes. That is, the customer should just be able to change the API version they're using to call into the service or upgrade to a newer version of the client library to call into the service without changing any of their code at all. But then if they wanna leverage new features in a new version, then of course the customer will have to modify their source code in order to take advantage of the new features that are in the new version of the service. We'll be talking much more about versioning and these kinds of requirements and how to make it all work together also later on in the course. Now, for so those people who already have an existing service that's in general availability, our recommendation is that you not change or break the existing API. For the reasons I just said, we don't want to break existing customers who are using the service. So instead, if you learn something new in this course that you'd like to apply, you leverage this for maybe new things that you are creating to your service, or maybe you have existing APIs in your service that customers are struggling with, maybe it does make sense to redo those APIs using some of the techniques that I explain within this course. Also, you wanna consider consistency within your service. You don't wanna have, let's say, the way to enumerate items of a collection one way um, for some resource and do it in a completely different way for some other resource that your service provides. You wanna have some degree, a high degree, of consistency across. And a lot of the techniques I'll be talking about in this course 
are these kinds of techniques where we want to apply them consistently so that customers have a consistent experience when using your service or other services as well if they follow similar patterns that I talk about here. Now let's talk about who this course is for. Well, I work uh, at Microsoft and I am an architect on the Azure team. Uh, I'm also, uh, more specifically, on the Azure SDK Architecture Board. I am also on the Azure Breaking Change Review Board, and I'm also on the Azure API Stewardship Board. Uh, the last one is a team of experts, um, experienced people in uh, HTTP and REST APIs, and we go and help other teams within Azure to do like best practices and follow the web standards and consistent patterns and practices and so on. So one of the main reasons why I'm producing this course is so that it can be an authoritative guide for software developers at Microsoft who are building Azure services. Um, but for customers who are using Azure services, this course is also useful because it informs you as to how Microsoft is going about designing the Azure APIs. And you'll learn about what policies we have in place uh, for doing certain things like how we do versioning and how we think about breaking changes and so on. Um, but even if you are not uh, care about Azure at all, um, and you're just building REST APIs yourself that have nothing to do with Azure, I would say that 99% of this course is not specific to Azure, and this just has general purpose guidelines and good practices in it that you could consider following. And for the parts that are Azure specific, Perhaps you want to do something similar, but maybe in a slightly different way. And of course, it's all up to you then how you want to implement these things for your own service. 